So, good morning. How's everyone doing this morning? Any hangovers out there? <laughs> Alrighty, I've got quite a full session, so I'm going to take the extra couple of two minutes uh, to try and make sure I can fit everything in. Um, so my name's Adam Murray. Uh, I'm from Sydney in Australia. Uh, I've recently started my own consulting company called Tickaboo. Um, and today I'm going to present to you about managing your Git uh, and using VSTS for doing um, PowerShell module deployments. So who's using Git in their day-to-day -day development at the moment? That's good. That's very good. Anyone that's not definitely needs to be there. It's amazing once you start using that tooling how useful it can be. Uh, who's using VSTS today? Oh, that's pretty good as well. Package management within VSTS? Ooh, two, not too bad. Uh, who's got binary components, so DLLs or XEs in the Git modules today? Not too many, okay. So the build process I'm gonna present today, um, you, we handle binary pit, bits, uh, we actually put them in a separate package so that they're no, not clogging up your Git repository. Um, so we had a few scenarios where we wanted to have Selenium, for example, as part of one of our modules. We wanted Nlog in another module. Um, the demonstration today, I'm just using a very small library that does some network calculations. Um, we, once you want to put those things into your module, you want to keep them separate from where your PowerShell code is. I think Lee Holmes mentioned yesterday that of all the code that he's written, all the PowerShell code equates to about five meg. And um, once you start chucking binaries into your Git repository, that'll blow up very quickly. Start slowing down your Git clones, start slowing down your um, build processes. So um, what we're gonna cover, so we'll, we'll start from scratch, we'll create a VSTS project, we'll set up VSTS package management. Um, I'll quickly walk through using NuGet to push a package up into package management. Um, I use Plaster to scaffold out a PowerShell module uh, with all the basic bits that I need so that I can just start creating my functions and my tests. It has all my build pipeline built into it um, and all the other pieces that I need. Uh, and that uses invoke build um, along as, as long as with Plaster. So Plaster does the scaffolding and invoke build is used as the build component. So invoke build is essentially uh, very similar to Pisaki or Cake if everyone, anyone's used those. Uh, it's got a bit of a different implementation in the background but the principles are the same where you define tasks. Um, then we'll use VSTS to build the module with the binary component in it and publish that module back to a VSTS package, package management feed. So that acts as like an internal uh, PowerShell gallery for you. It's like a private PowerShell gallery. Um, and then we'll use PowerShell package management to actually install that module onto my machine. We'll make an update and then I'll install the update. So lots of people talk about uh, the demo gods. The demo gods don't worry me about, don't worry me. It's the demo demons that I'm worried about. And because we're using VSTS, there's quite a fair few opportunities for this to uh, go a bit, bit iffy. So let's see how we go. So I've just got a clean, a relatively clean VM that I'm using for the demonstration today. Uh, this is VSTS that you're looking at here. So VSTS is the um, online version of TFS. I highly recommend using VSTS over TFS. You don't have to worry about any of the stuff in the background. They're coming out with new features all the time. Over the last two years, it's absolutely amazing to see what the team's done with VSTS. The amount of functionality has just been increasing at a rate of knots. Um, so I don't have any projects defined yet. With VSTS, you get five licenses for free. So any small team can use it for free. If you have MSDN, uh, those users are free as well. Package management has a 30-day free trial. Uh, it's provided by Microsoft as well, uh, but it's also free for five users ongoing. If you have MSDN Enterprise, those licenses include a package management license as well. So we're just gonna call our demo Summit 2018. We use Git, so the other option I wouldn't even consider. <laughs> so definitely don't consider that. 
uh, agile workflow. So it's going off and creating our project in the background. VSTS now actually provides a one-stop shop for your whole uh, development lifecycle. It has code management, uh, build and release management, it has work management, and it also has um, a Wikipedia and you can add extensions such as package management. So what, whereas previously you might have been using Jenkins and Team City for your build or you might have been using um, GitHub or Bitbucket for your code management, you might be using Jira for issue tracking and Confluence for your wiki, you can do all of that within the one uh, interface, which is very helpful. So up here you can see some of the items. So under code, we're just looking at our Git repository. Um, work items, so you can have backlogs, Kanban boards, whatever you want. Um, build and release, so you can do build releases. Libraries are like a way of um, just collating all your variables and common components that you might want to use during your builds and releases together. Um, you can do automated some testing in here as well. That's something that I haven't actually uh, explored very much. And then the wiki function, which is relatively new as well. Package management was introduced, I think, uh, about mid last year. And um, there's another feature that we're going to use, which is actually using a YAML build file. So previously I had to go and define my build step-by-step -step in the GUI and um, VSTS is now caught up with App Bayer and uh, like Jenkins pipelines, I can version control my YAML build file and when I push that up, it'll actually create my build process. Okay, so let's go and create some package ma management feeds. I've already got installed, but I'll just show you what the process would be. You just um, browse to the mo marketplace Search for package management. So there are a few downloads, 25,000. So it's definitely, it's definitely getting some use. Um, all you need to do is follow the bouncing ball. You click get. I've already added it into my account, so it's gonna probably say that it's already existing. But um, if it wasn't, you just say add free trial and you get your 30 days free trial. And then once that expires, then you can assign the license to the five users or buy it. Okay, so now that I've got it installed, when I go to um, my build and release, I get this extra tab called packages. So if one, when you don't have it installed, you won't see that packages tab. Screen's a bit small here, a bit big. So we're going to create a new feed. I'm going to call it Summit um, Bin. So what we're actually going to do is create two feeds, one for our binary pieces and another feed for our uh, private PowerShell gallery. So Summit Bin is for our binary pieces. It's associated with my account. You can actually have um, the package management within VSTS use an upstream source, so you could have it, if it didn't find the package, it could go to nuget.org. Um, I don't want that for what we're gonna do in the demo today, so I just say I'm gonna use packages from our feed. Rightio, we've created a feed. VST, VSTS gives some, some helpful information on how to get started. Uh, they've actually, created a VSTS credential provider. What this does is when you're using NuGet, it will cache your credentials every time that you want to talk to VST, VSTS package manager. So uh, I've already downloaded this package. It's just a zip file and you just add it to the path. It's just got new, NuGet.exe and some DLLs for the credential manager. Um, so then what I want to do is I want to add my, my source to NuGet. So this is going to be used as part of our build when we want to retrieve the binary. NuGet will actually call out and retrieve our binary. So. Okay, so we're going to add it summit add summit bin and just using that URL, the endpoint that it gave us to NuGet. So that's been added. 
And while we're still in VSTS, I'm just going to create another feed for our modules. So we're going to call this Summit Module. Once again, just use my only in packages published in this feed. So it's very simple to create the package uh, to create the package management feeds. Now what we want to do is um, so we have some binary components that I want to actually put up in that repository that we can use as part of the build process. So this DLL here, it was actually came from, um, it's available on NuGet.org. Uh, I downloaded it from NuGet.org and I expanded the NuGet package um, and then I created a new NuGet package that just has that one DLL in it. So when you download a NuGet package, it's actually just a zip file. So you can open up the zip file and you'll see it has a lib folder which has the contents that I want. These other folders, underscore rels, package, um, they get created when you do a new get pack. So what happens, I could actually, if I went into this folder and ran a new get pack, I could generate that new, new, uh, new package file. It uses the new get spec, which is just an XML file. It has some metadata about the package etc. So that's all you really need to know for the moment. What we'll do is we'll um, now do a push. Okay, so we're gonna push to our source that we added. We're using API key VSTS, so whenever you wanna invoke that credential manager, VSTS is always the API key that you use. Um, and then I just give the path to the NuGet package. So let's see how we go here. You can see it's hit the credential provider. I've already authenticated against my account um, when I was practicing the demo. So it, it gave me a prompt to provide my VSTS credentials. Um, if you use two-factor, it supports two-factor because it's just the normal micro Microsoft type dialog login. Um, so the good news, our package was pushed. So if we go back to package management and we look at our summit bin, there we go. So um, that's what we're after. So now that we've got our binary sitting in our feed that we've created in VSTS, what we want to do is actually create our module. So I use um, Plaster. Let's just have a look at the Plaster template quickly. So Rob did a good session on Plaster yesterday, so if any of you missed that, uh, when it comes out on, on YouTube, definitely have a look, because he went into a lot more detail than I'm gonna go into. So the main component, um, if you think about Plaster, all it really does is take a set of files and it allows you to define, take some input, so you can say, ask a few questions, get some input back, and then based on that input you can say, copy files in particular folders, create a manifest based on some of that input, um, and replace content in some of those files uh, based on that input as well. So essentially, it can do token replacement within your file. So there's three sections to it. The metadata, which allows you to version control your plaster template. Um, parameters, which are the questions where you're getting input data. And you can have default values, you can have a multi-choice, um, uh, and you can even have a multi-select, which Rob covered yesterday. The other section is the actual content. And here, so you can see the format of this um, variable, plaster underscore parameter underscore module name. In the parameters, when I ask for the module name, that name gets tagged onto that prefix, and that variable is then available for me to use in the template. So I've, I've based my uh, module structure largely sort of on what PS Rambling Cookie did a few years ago using public and private. 
Um, and then I dot source those functions. I find that makes it a lot easier to do pester testing. Uh, so that's, that's the basic idea there. So let's kick it off and create this module. You're, everyone using PS Reline as well? So this searching I'm doing, I use Control R, and actually uh, PS Reline's built into Windows 10, um, and it keeps my history across all sessions, and I can search back and forward, and it has a lot of enhancements that are, are much better than the normal history. So I'm just pointing it at my cluster template, and I'm going to put it into this folder, C new repo. Name the module, it's going to be the same as our project. It doesn't have to be, but it, it just makes things easier. Um, the module version number, I'm just taking a default here. I do some tricks as part of my module that I'll show you in a minute. I use Visual Studio Code for all my development now. Um, so I set up a couple of settings in Visual Studio Code to help me. We're going to use Visual Team Studio Team Services for our build. Uh, it can pick your name out of your Git um, profile. So I'm just going to take my name from my Git profile. We set up our summit bin and our summit module. And the, these inputs I'm taking here are, are actually replaced in some of my invoke build scripts with, um, so that it can actually connect to the right uh, feeds. Right, yeah. Uh, the other thing I spit out at the end is I give you some help um, on how to register that repository to point to the VSTS feed. There's an issue with um, Package Manager in PowerShell where it currently supports version 2 of NuGet, not version 3. So um, there's a few things here. I've changed the UR a little bit to have a version 2 endpoint. And um, I have to do a workaround at the end when I'm publishing the module, and I'll talk about that a bit later. So let's register this. That looks all right. Okay, let's, let's have a look at what we've created. Okay, there's one little step I've missed, which is to actually um, sync my code. So I'm going to do that now. So what we're going to do is we're going to push Do a git init to initialize my repository. Uh, you can see my prompt has changed. I use PoshKit. Any anyone using PoshKit? It's a very handy um, extension for PowerShell to allow you to see from the command line what's happening with your repository. So it's essentially taking your Git status and um, providing information around which files are untracked, which files are unstaged, which files are uncommitted and whether you're in sync with your remote origin, uh, with your remote repositories. Uh, it's very handy. So we want to commit all these files. So I'm going to do a git add star. And I should commit. So I'm going through that sort of three stage process where I add commit and then I'm going to set up my remote so that I can push. So you can do those tasks from within VS Code as well um, for those that don't want to play in the command line. Okay, now we have our code here. Let's have a look at our new module. So I have a subfolder with the module name, which actually contains the module. And then the other folders are the utilities that help me with my build process and my testing of my module. So I have private and public, my um, module definition, my PSM1 file, 
my tests, I mirror my structure for my module. So I have a private, a public. I have a basic test as part of my scaffolding, which just tests the module manifest. Uh, I have a git ignore, which is very important because I don't want to go through all this trouble of um, moving my binaries out of my git repository to all of a sudden commit them into the repository. Because uh, once it's in there, it's not coming out. <laughs> well, not easily anyway. Uh, we have the YAML file, which we'll come back to in a minute. Um, the packages.config is a file that's used by NuGet. So if you're doing Visual Studio development, um, you'd have a packages.config that would define any packages or libraries that you relied on. NuGet can read that file and then it will actually go to the NuGet feed and try and find the package and download it locally. So th this is a bit of the magic for handling the binary pieces. Um, there's a number of files that are to do with invoke build. So uh, this file here is the main file and what it does, it defines a series of tasks. So I've got a task here called install dependencies but on top of that, I can have a task which I call test, which runs um, a series of, of subtasks. So it'll run clean, install dependencies, run tests, and confirm test pass. Uh, task dot is your default task, so it'll run test and publish NuGet. But there's a few little tricky things in here that I'll just point out. So here I do a uh, NuGet restore. It's pointing at my summit bin NuGet source that we set up. So that's where it's able to find the DLL that I've, that NuGet package that I've set up. I then actually, when that NuGet restored, it'll restore to a packages folder, and I copy the DLL from the packages folder actually into my module, into a lib folder. Um, so we'll see that when, when I run it. Um, the other, most of it's pretty standard. I run um, script analyzer, which is this section here. Uh, the tests is pester. Uh, Jim did a very good session on PESTA and uh, I think Glenn and I think there's a few other sessions. So if you're more interested in, in finding out more, check those out. Uh, what I do is I collect those results and I have a task called confirm test passed. And what it does, it just reads the results of the pesters, uh, PESTA tests and it also looks at code coverage. So I can set a setting to say, uh, I will only allow it to publish if I've got 50% code coverage or 80% code coverage. So it sort of forces people to make sure that they're, they're having a bit of an effort. Uh, there's a publish task here, which is if you wanted to publish it to an SMB repository. I don't use that as part of this demo. Um, but this, this task called publish NuGet is very key. It's actually not publishing to NuGet. What it is doing it is updating our module manifest it gets the newest, it gets a version uh, from our build server. That's, so the build server is a hosted server essentially in Azure. Uh, BSTS has hosted agents for um, Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. So you can be developing in any language and targeting any platform, and you can use a hosted agent. You can also run those agents on premise. Um, so you've got a lot of flexibility with BSTS. What I needed was as I publish a new module, I need to make sure that my versioning is updated every time that module is built. So I take an environment variable, which is called um, environment build build ID, which gets incremented every time I do a build within my BSTS account. So it just makes sure that every time I'm pushing my module, I've got a new unique version number on it without even me having to increment uh, the version. The other things, the other thing I do there is because I'm using this public-private structure, anytime I have a, a script in my public folder, the name of that script matches the name of the function, which is also um, designed to be publicly exported. So rather than me having to go and update my module ma manifest every time I'm um, doing a build, I automatically scan my public directory. So I just get all the items out of it. And then I get the base name. So for example, if I have get summit.ps1 in my public folder, that'll just return get summit. And then I pass that array into um, update module manifest. Functions to export functions. So it's doing that, that step automatically for me, so I'm not forgetting to do it. 
and you can see that it's also putting that new version number on. The next step is because there's a limitation with um, Package Manager in PowerShell, I can't use Publish Module to publish into VSTS today. Uh, there is a preview release of Package Manager on the gallery that ha has version free support, but I haven't had a chance to test it yet. Uh, so in the future, you might be able to use Publish Module and point it directly at your um, VSTS private gallery. But for the moment, what I actually do is I create the NuGet package that Publish Module will would do in the background, and I use NuGet to push that up to VSTS. So it's a little bit of a workaround, but essentially it's doing the same thing that Publish Module would do in the background. Uh, so that's this NuGet pack step that's creating an, an NU PKG package. And as part of my scaffolding, I have a new spec file there. So you don't actually have to do anything. If you were to pick up my scaffolding, it would create all this for you, you wouldn't have to worry about it. Okay, so what we don't have is any functions. So we need to fix that pretty quick. I've just got a couple that we're gonna copy in. So this is where um, VSTS really comes in, uh, PoshKit comes in handy. I can see I've got two new files, no modified files and no deleted files. And because it's in red, I know these aren't staged. So if we just, have a quick look at these functions. Get summit does nothing. <laughs> so it just does a directory listing and uh, out, outputs it to null. And new subnet, it does actually use uh, my DLL to do a subnet calculation. So what we also need to do is we need to add that DLL into our module um, using add type. to our module. So every time our module loads, it'll run this add type, which makes that DLL available for my command line. Okay, well, the things I haven't talked about, so I've got a couple of pester tests, but um, th there's nothing fancy about those. Um, what I haven't talked about is this VS Code folder. So this is in my scaffolding. You can actually um, scaffold settings that you want your whole team to have in common. So for example here, I've got a setting that says trim trailing white space is true. That's the only setting I'm currently pushing in my scaffolding. But it, as you get more mature in your team, you might want to put in more settings to have uh, VS Code do more things for you automatically and common across your whole team. The other file in there was um, a task.json. And this allows you to integrate um, build or test tasks natively into VS Code. So as I said, I was using, I'm using invoke build to do my testing and my build process. So what I can define in here is, a little bit clearer, just look at the test task here. So I have a label test, it's a shell, so it's gonna shell out. Um, and it's all it's gonna do is run invoke build with the task test. Pretty simple. Um, VS Code has this idea of types or kinds of tasks. So this is a test task. Uh, it's just a way of grouping tasks together. And I've said this is the default test task. Then for build, as I said, that dot for invoke build defines the default task. So it's exactly the same. It's gonna shell out. It's gonna run build and it's gonna run the command invoke, uh, invoke build task dot. So we're ready to go, so let's see what that looks like, that integration. So if I go to tasks, I can then see the tasks in my invoke build, um, build process. So these are the ones that I had defined in this build settings, build settings, um, so to publish NuGet, confirm test pass, these will be the same things that I can see in this list. Publish NuGet, confirm test pass. The other thing with the defaults, so when I said um, if I want to run the test task, I can just go Control Shift P to bring up the palette and I can say run test task 
or I can go task, if I can spell, uh, run build task, and it'd pick up that default build task. What we want to do is run the test task and make sure everything's working on, on our machine. So you can see the NuGet restore happened. So it actually went up to VSTS to our binary feed, pulled down the NuGet package. It's expanded that out. It's created a lib folder and copied the file in. It's kicking off our tests and hopefully, yes, that's good. Um, so all our tests passed. Our code coverage was run 100%. Everything looks hunky-dory on our local machine. So let's just have a quick look at what's happened here in my folder structure. So as part of that um, install dependencies it's, and, the pest, and the test run, it's created this folder called artifacts, which has my results in it. It created a folder called packages, which has my NuGet package file, so you can see NuGet package. It expands that out so that I can actually see that lib directory that I was talking about, which is what I compiled into the NuGet package or, or packed into the NuGet package. And then I have a step that copies from that directory into my lib folder within my module. So now the DLL is actually where I need it for my module. So when we're gonna do the publish on VSTS, we should be okay. So we wanna commit our changes, so we can do it in here. Updates to module. How many people are using VS Code? Any ISE users? Any other editors? Vim? <laughs> okay. So before I push this, what I'm, I need to just explain what that YAML file is doing. So this YAML file just details the steps that my build's gonna run. So once I push this back up to VSTS, VSTS will automatically pick up that file and kick off a build based on the steps that are defined in it. Um, I'll just run quickly through the steps, there's not too many of them. So I, I use a step called use NuGet. Well, it's actually called, the task is called NuGet Tools Installer and it's prefixed with a version. So you use at version number. Uh, this YAML feature was only released in, I think around November last year, so it's in preview. Um, so you actually have to enable it on your account. So you go to your account. Sorry. Preview features. Um, there's, there's some preview features on, on just you, but um, this is based on your account. Uh, so you just have to turn on build YAML de definitions, which I've already done previously. Okay. So we install NuGet and puts it in the path. We do a NuGet restore, pointing at our summon, summit bin feed. It reaches, we tell it to use the packages.config file so it knows go and get that network DLL that I want or that package. I then run a PowerShell command and here I'm uh, essentially installing invoke build and pester onto my build machine. So I'm using a hosted build agent. It has various packages and software already stored on it. You can go to um, VSTS um, and you can actually find out what packages are on there. It doesn't by default come with invoke build and it comes with an old version of pester. So I install invoke build and update pester to the latest version. Uh, I use this skip publisher check with the force and the scope current user because they can't install it on the whole machine. And that gets around the issue with um, the fact that they baked Pester into the OS. I then kick off um, my build, which is just running invoke build, install dependencies, test, publish NuGet. It just runs those tasks on the hosted agent. I then do a NuGet push. So the reason I'm not using NuGet as part of my invoke build for the VSTS part, even though I did that locally on my own machine when I did the tests, is because VSTS has um, native authentication to my package feeds. So rather than me having to provide credentials to say connect to this feed, um, because I'm doing the build within my own VSTS account, it, it knows how to authenticate. 
So I do the push here, and where are we pushing to? We're pushing to summit module, which is the second feed we created just for our module. Um, then I publish test results and I publish coverage results. So let's get that up there so it can kick off. What we'll see under builds. I've run into a little issue that I found. Um, if you don't initialize your repository, you have to actually make a change to your YAML file uh, to get it to trigger. So if I had to actually clone my repository um, first and then pushed up with the YAML file, it would have been fine. But because I, I didn't initialize my repository, um, it didn't see the change in that YAML file. So let's, by default, it uses this queue anyway. So I'm just gonna get rid of that and save it. YAML. This wasn't part of the demo. It's just that I went out of order. <laughs> so we'll see if we can, we can recover, hopefully. Oh, great. Look at this. We have a build running. So all those steps that I defined in that YAML file, we'll see, we'll see those start appearing. There's some default steps where it clones the repository. Uh, there we go, now we can see all the tasks that I defined. And you get, console, you get a console view of what's happening as it's going along. As I said, you can use hosted agents or you can use on-premise agents. As part of the free account, you get 240 minutes of free hosted agent running time. I've run this demo a lot of times over the last couple of weeks. I think I'm up to about 35 minutes. So it doesn't take a lot of time. Um, the, the other thing you can do is if I put a hosted agent, it would actually go and pull out to VSTS and pick up the job and then it'll run on premise. So we've actually used this process to do quite a few things in the past. Um, I had, a, I had a process that ran and took the Windows to our server 2016 ISO um, and using an on-premise agent, we would download the latest version of the Microsoft patch. We would then use convert um, to VHD, patch that um, ISO offline and spit out a VHD that we could then consume each month onto our VMM library. So it's, it's pretty flexible. So our builds run, we're just doing a push now. So this is where we're pushing the NuGet package that is our module up to our internal, or our private PowerShell gallery that we created. Publishing the test results, and we're nearly done. And we're doing okay with time, so that's not too bad. Alrighty, so that job's finished. Uh, some of the nice features you get in VSTS is because I am publishing my test to test results, I can see, I can get information about the tests and any failed tests. Um, I can also see information about my code coverage in there as well. So it's a pretty nice feature. So if we go to packages, so we were looking at summit bin before, let's have a look at summit module. Hey, so this is a PowerShell module sitting in VSTS package management. Oh yeah, so what I want to do, if we have a look under modules, so I don't have anything installed on my machine at the moment. So I want to, I've registered that um, feed. So I should be able to find module, repository, what do we call it? <laughs> Summit module, yes, spot on. Is this gonna work? No. 
Uh, so it didn't work because um, we haven't provided any credentials to authenticate. Uh, PowerShell has a concept of PS default parameters. It's a standard <laughs> variable that you can use to append to commands um, default parameters that you'd like to use. So what we can use is, um, what do we want? We want PS default. So what I want to do, I want to use this command here, PS default parameter values, well not this command, this variable takes a hash table. So it's star, I'm putting in star hyphen module. So that means for any commandlet that is star hyphen module, pass into the credential parameter dollar cred. As part of my profile, I actually I've um, I created a PS credential. I used expel CLX, CLI XML to store that credential encrypted on my disk. As part of my profile, I load that into dollar cred every time my module kicks off. So, so where this comes into play is um, now that I'm using package manager within PowerShell, it needs to be able to authenticate to, to VSTS. When I was using NuGet, it was using the VSTS credential provider as part of NuGet. So I had to set up a access token. Uh, so under security, you can create a personal access token. I've already got one here, test PM, but I'll just show you the process. You go add. And you only need selected scopes. So the only scope you actually need is packaging read. That's all it needs is because the only thing we're going to do with a PowerShell is read from that, that package feed. So I've already done that, so we can just ignore that for the second. Um, and then I set, it's not very easy to see here, but uh, repository. So I set the parameter repository to default to summit module so that I don't have to type it every time. So let's run that. Okay, so now if I do find module, I don't need to specify any parameters because by default it's now taking credential as dollar cred and it's taking uh, repository as summit module. So let's do install module, summit 2018. And once again, because I'm using those wildcards, it's gonna get passed to um, this command as well. And scope, we wanna just do current user. So it just installs my profile. Okay, so we can do get command, module summit 2018. There's our two ex public functions. If I have a look at the folder, we've got our version controls under lib. There's my DLL, wonderful. So now I can run um, my new subnet. Just takes in an IP address and a subnet mask, it spits out some information about the network. So that's actually the DLL, the binary component of my module working. Um, if we run get summit, we don't get much at all, so because it, it didn't do anything. So now we've, we've published one version of our module. What happens as we want to make more changes? We just go back to our functions. So in this case, let's close these, clean up. So I want to edit my get summit, and we're just going to add an additional line. So we've changed our function, we'll update our test. Our test was actually very dodgy here, so. So we run the command and it should be PowerShell VSTS. Save that, run my test, so control F, control shift P, run test tasks locally. It's much quicker to find out if it fails here before I push it to VSTS. Okay, great, everything's worked successfully again. So let's Commit our changes, and we'll push those up. So 
what we should see is another build will kick off. Build. Got a running build, which is great. So while this is running, is there any questions? Uh, because you're using a personal access token, that because it's using that personal access token, it won't have two-factor authentication. Yes, that's right. So for people that don't want the binary components, you could change the plaster template and remove the NuGet um, restore bits um, so that you could just be using this for just your normal module development um, and versioning. Uh, the binary bits was just a, a bit of an additional thing and then the issue that we we're running in as we we're getting into more complex modules. The other thing you can do, if you want to have a step at the end of this build process that push this to um, uh, PowerShell gallery, you just change that final step instead of publishing to the VSTS uh, package manager feed you just do publish module, put your API key in as a variable, and call that, and then you could push directly to the PowerShell gallery. Oh, wonderful. Or, or you could do both, that's right. So um, there's a lot of flexibility. And I've just got the basic, so in my scaffolding, you could pretty much do exactly what I did, scaffold it, create a um, function, a test, and then you should be able to do the same, uh, get a build running. So my, um, my scaffolding is available on GitHub, and I'm gonna put a copy of just the, uh, the final module that we had today up on, on uh, GitHub as well. Okay, we've run successfully, our test passed, so let's just have a quick look at our packages now. Should look a little bit different. And so under versions, I now have two versions. So this one's created just now. And so within um, PowerShell, I can do update module. Summit 2018. And what we'll see happen here is we get our additional folder. We do, uh, we do um, import module. Summit 2018 force, so that we can get the new command. And then if we run get summit, PowerShell, VSTS rock. <laughs> so we're running out of time. Uh, so I have a bit of a recap in the slides. So we just went through, we set up the VSTS project. We did the VSTS packages, feeds. Uh, then we did the NuGet and we pushed that into our binary feed. We then did our local module setup, um, ran that locally, uh, and then we set up our YAML build by pushing that up into VSTS, um, and then we did the steps within PowerShell to import, um, to install that module and to update that module. So, uh, so I had some information about the steps. I use Chocolatey, absolutely rave about it, it's amazing. Um, I mentioned PoshKit, it's great. I just had this, the other steps that I used on that machine. I've got some links in the pack to uh, the resources that have got a lot more information about um, what I've done. And that's it. Thanks, guys.